All right, hi guys. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Future List. So, if this is your first event of the day, welcome. Now, uh, and here is a quick intro about Future List. All right. So with FutureList, we're helping the creatives of tomorrow prepare for the future of work. Basically, we partner up with seven university partners and uh, got over 15 mentors and speakers just to provide eight hours of content just for you guys. Now, a bit about Cal Creative. We're a digital platform and app that aims to disrupt how creatives, professional, get work and collaborate to make themselves future-proof. All right, before I begin, here are some housekeeping rules. One thing we like to do over at CC is that we would like you to turn on your cameras and also rename yourself so that you could include your Instagram handle at the back of your name. That way you can connect with each other after the event if you wanna network and also keep the connection. All right, second of all, it's time to unmute yourself because this is your chance to voice your opinions and thoughts. Um, since this is going to be a reverse mentorship, it's going to be a discussion slash forum among all of you guys. This is where we get to learn and discuss what you want. And since you guys are going to be the one voicing out your opinions and asking your questions, and um, me and Lai are here to answer that, uh, answer your questions for you. All right, now, here is a quick intro of our lovely moderators today. On the left here, we have May. She is the regional creative lead for Nestle. And on the right here, we have Book of Live, which is the founder of Studio Behind 90. All right. Oh. All right. Um, so May, would you like to do a quick introduction of yourself? Sure. Thanks, Chloe. Hi, everyone. So as you guys can see, I am the regional creative lead of Nestle. Um, I'm very excited to be moderating this session with Lai today to talk to you guys about, you know, what it's like to have a career as a creative in an MNC or startup. I actually started as an illustrator, so I never started in an MNC. I was actually also an independent artist for the longest time. Nice. So it'll be really fun to talk to everyone about that. All right, and um, over to you, Lai. Could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Lai, uh, also known as Book of, Book of Life from uh, Instagram. I'm a full-time commercial illustrator who also happens to know a little bit about business as I run my own illustration studio for about five to six years right now here in KL. All right, nice, nice. Okay, before we begin, we're going to run a little poll just to get... Um, the audience's opinions on basically startup versus like MMC. So Ishika, could you um, troll the poll? All right. No right or wrong answers, right? Yeah, there's no right or wrong answers. This is just preference. Okay, guys, your exams guys are done. <laughs> no more finals. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I see those answers piling in. Oh, and if you guys have an opinion on why would you prefer an MMC or startup, feel free to drop it into the comment. Like I said, this is a discussion and feel free to unmute yourself and voice your opinions out anytime. All right, so ah, no preference. Hmm, that is interesting. Like the majority of you guys picked like no preference. Huh. All right, I but guess also we'll... a high number of MNCs. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we could. Start I actually with... pick MNC. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you actually like do that? You know, you're yeah. the founder of your own startup. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If I have a choice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Okay, so you see, Lai has spoken up. So why did you choose an MNC, even though, yeah. 
because uh, the, the the life of a startup is um, highly unpre unpredictable. And um, the, I have been in the industry for five to six years right now. And it's sometimes I just don't have a time to a, take a break, you know, not like when I'm in MNC. So sometimes I will, uh, some, it's just sometimes, I, I just wanted to start the, the ball rolling actually. Uh, but sometimes I literally in the middle of night, I just felt uh, a little bit depressed or anxiety on how the future might be for my line or how the company can grow and scale, right? Uh, I just want to take a break and worry about nothing. I just want to do my job yeah. and I can get paid. But uh, in, in life of startup, if you don't do one day of job or don't do that job perfectly, <laughs> it might affect uh, the company long term. So sometimes I get exhausted. Lah. Of course, most of the time, it feels great. <laughs> I think okay. that's like the back end of like hustle culture, isn't it? I think that yeah. that's like the biggest conversation right now post pandemic. Yeah. Anyone else want to express your opinion on hustle culture? Like I know some people who feel very strong feelings about it. Like I have my qualms but before I get into it. Anyone else wants to, to tell me, please feel free. This is an open platform. I would love to have a conversation with anyone. Yeah. And, those who've said yes to MMC or yes to startup, now is a good time to voice your opinions on it. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. My name is Hello. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hi, um, hey, you. <laughs> I kind of agree with like Lai because I'm currently working in a startup like agency. Um, because but, but, like, what he said is true la, because even though there's a lot of work, I feel like there's, a, there's like an, there's like a, how do you say? an unwritten or an unspoken drive like behind everyone to get the like to, to get the work done because it's like a small team right so I feel like that's like one good thing about startups but I do want to know if like does MNC have that kind of like vibe or culture to it okay so you're curious about how it's like to work in an MNC right I think yeah Hey, sure, I'll give you, yeah, I love that question, actually. Mm -hmm. Perfect question. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, what you guys said, like what Lai said is true. Structurally, right, you have something, you have more of a process flow. I think that can sometimes stagnate creative processes because everything needs to go in an order. Before you can even say, hey, I've got this grand, great idea. I want to go with it. They said, hold up, here's a five-page document that you need to fill in first. Right, which that, that is the negative of it. I would say um, creativity is creativity. I wouldn't say that it's any lower pace or slower pace. It's equally as fast pace. It's just a different fast pace, right? Which is why I think a lot of, maybe a lot of you said no preference. I would actually say to you, hey, you, um, my advice is that there is no right or wrong. Uh, it really is your passion and how you feel about working in certain places, right? I'm sure Lai can, can attest to that, that even though he feels that he wants that structure, the passion he has and the drive he has for the work that he's doing is what really drives you towards going to where you want to go, right? So, yes. but I won't say, sorry, Lai, do you want to go? No, 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 yes, I, I, I say I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I would say just because you started in a startup doesn't mean you can't try an MNC, you can try that out. And after that, you can probably decide, you know what? Maybe I prefer the, you know, the, the pace of a startup. So, yeah. I'm just curious, uh, uh, May. Because mm. <laughs> uh, when I started my own studio, the main, um, main goal is to be direct clients. So, I don't have to go right. through uh, more ladders just to get yep. my idea go through, right? Um, yep. Also, to get the idea um, yep. bouncing. Is there a way we can eliminate all the stuff, you know? In corporates, in, in MNC. Ah, I, that's the thing, guys. Processes <laughs> like this don't... I think that's always that thing, right? I think it's for the longest time. So like I said at the beginning, I started as someone who was a freelance illustrator, right? So I was with attached to many agencies and I was sick of it. And I said, you know, if I worked in a different... If I worked for myself, I would have less. But I think that's not true, sadly. Um, it's... It is what it is. I think, you know, whether we like it or not, that is the structure of things. And I would say my advice is really to detach yourself and your sense of self and your sense of work, especially as a creative in that process, because really it's just paperwork. It really is just paperwork and it's a yes and a no. It does not tie yourself to whether or not 
you're a good designer or you're a bad designer or your ideas are good or your ideas are bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to it can be so demoralizing. Like I can completely understand. Yeah. Oh, that I cannot. Is, that is also sometimes what we face in the studio as well. Because mm-hmm. uh, um, the, the feedbacks were not uh, based on how good the illustration is or how the, it's not on the big direction, but on a small right. unnecessary detail that does not reflect on the overall impact. For example, like uh, if we change a certain color of a certain person's clothes, it doesn't change the story at all. It doesn't enhance the story. But we could spend a lot of weeks just to tune that person's stuff. And it, <laughs> it doesn't help with the story. It doesn't help with the campaign, you know. So sometimes we would feel frustrated uh, when working in a lot of layers. Understood. Yeah, it's the same here for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so. I, and I always tell my team, look, sometimes it really is about getting the job done, right? And you know, not think of it as something as a negative thing. It really is just about getting a task done. You'll do amazing things. There will be a time period, I'm sure, where you get the project and you're like, this is the project of my dreams. Yeah. And, you know, but there are some days we just need to get by. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Anyone else in the audience want to tell us our, your opinions? Yeah. Um, sorry. I kind of like a follow-up question for me. Sure. Um, Okay, so yeah, with all ahead. those like processes, do you ever feel like you, like you feel demotivated to have to have to go through all those processes and it diminishes your like creative juices or anything? Um. Yes. Plain <laughs> simple answer. Yes. But this is what this is the way I deal with it, right? I don't know, lie if you would agree. My biggest skill set for me is I am a cre- creative solution problem person. I like to solve problems creatively, right? And my end goal always to tell myself is that I have a skill set that a lot of people don't have, which is to solve things creatively. A process is still a process, but the end thing is still me, you know, doing that task creatively as I can, right? Obstacles will come left, right, center. There will be a difficult stakeholder who says, I hate the color red. And I'll be like, but why? you know, and they'll be like, no reason. I just don't like the color red. But that doesn't affect, I think that what Lai was saying is not, but that doesn't really affect the, the end goal of it. To remember is that your skill sets are valued here. You're hired and you are regarded as somebody who can do something that a lot of people can't do, right? Mm-hmm. So really push yourself and put that same mentality, even when it gets hard to, to remember, I'm here because I can do it. I'm here because I have that capability. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But to add to add on to the to the sure. thing, right? When I first started the studio, my goal is to have no rules at all. <laughs> Everything based on feelings and uh, uh, reasonable, how reasonably it can be. For example, uh, we in a in a studio, we don't really have the amount of uh, maximum amount of leaves my staff can take. You know, it's it's always in a reasonable amount. So as long as the work can be done, that's in the guideline, right? So sometimes they can took more than two months, you know, for in a year, in a year, in total. So it might get a lot, but uh, a lot as long as the work gets done, then it's, uh, it's fine. However, when the company start growing, no rules actually uh, slow us down a lot, right? So um, it's, it's also kind of make us not that profitable in some cases. Like for example, uh, I usually will give uh, clients infinite revisions but in a certain period of time for example uh, if the campaign is going to launch in a month during that month we will give unlimited uh, changes uh, this is because uh, we are creative oriented uh, studio I want the best solution best visual out there so whatever helps um, to, the, to, to, to build a, a better visual we will just do it uh, I don't want to be demoralized people when they want to have good changes that's what that's the intention uh. but however I like that yeah, this thing has uh, taken a toll on the studio for, for quite some year already. So it's only until recently we start limits the revision again. So, <laughs> you know, I would say um, the rules in MNC, they are there for a reason, but uh, we are here to kind of like reinvent it a little bit, you know, take whatever is suitable for us. Do you think it's always been a creative thing where you just never know when to stop? Exactly. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I very much agree with what you guys said. Um, let's let's take a question from the floor. So Wayburn asked, um, 
Could you share with us the differences between MMC and startup in terms of securing the job, expectations on the job, for example, time frame, last minute work, multitasking different roles? Um, and what do you enjoy in your individual fields uh, in like an MMC slash startup and the freedom of expression on the job? Great question. Lige, I will let you take this wow. first. <laughs> um. But I, I think this is very much uh, 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 common sense, right? <laughs> when you're in a startup, definitely we will have to take everything that's, uh, that's delivered to us. Um, for example, last minute work, right? Uh, we will have to get it because we, we, we are not well funded enough. So we have to take almost every op good opportunity that we have right away. And uh, the thing about last minute job is that um, a, a lot of decisions can be made right away. You don't have to be approved, get approved by the bosses. And usually, I think our studio have the a no OT policy because that's, that's my vision when I start, I start my studio. Because most of the time, I, I think like without OT, we can get things done. Uh, for example, sometimes clients require us to, to send in the, um, the changes by Friday night or something, right? But they are not working on Saturday. So I wouldn't just follow that thing. Right? So everything will do uh, smartly as long as I know what is the actual uh, deadline. For example, they want us to deliver Friday because Tuesday there is a launch, but it's okay to, to deliver by Monday or so because they just feel safe to deliver by Friday night, which no one will be looking at it for over the weekend. No point my staff, you know, OT for that. So I'll always gauge all these things just to have a very healthy um, um, envi uh, working environment. Uh. Um, uh, in terms of multitasking, this is very, very interesting. When my stuff started came in, I actually throw, throw them a book. <laughs> I forgot the book already. I think it's called in Chinese it's called Gang Gang An Qing. I will figure out the, the, the English name, then maybe I'll share it on my Instagram or I will I'll share it to talk creatives. Um it's a book that basically says in current century, all the all people, all the millennium, we all have a multiple skills, right? So last time in a creative agency, what kind of job we have? We have a copywriter. We have a mailman, right? We have someone who literally the entire day just photocopying stuff or his entire job just taking the mail to the certain office. We have so many things for so many roles. But in, in the current, current landscape, uh, everyone is doing the same thing. I could be a mailman plus photocopier <laughs> plus a copywriter, blah, 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 right? Uh, one very good analogy that I always talk to new, new stuff is uh, as a photographer, during that time, during the 80s, um, a photographer took the photo, sent it to the editor. The editor looked at it, asked the writer to write something out, editor review it, and then submit to head chief of editor, blah, 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 right? But in current situation, the photographer took the photo, write the article, sent it to the editor, the editor edit, and then publish right away. So photographer is now the writer as well. And he, did, he himself had to find interesting places, interesting stories, I'm talking about National Geography, guys. Uh, it's more like the documentary photography. So, because I used to be a photographer, right? that's why I, I, I study this kind of stuff uh, because I want to, to have a better career. So, I realized um, if, I, if you, I'm here to, to be just a, an illustrator, I, we won't survive in the landscape for long. So, I encourage, I force them, <laughs> basically force them, you must be illustrator slash something, okay? So right now in my team, there, there are illustrator slash animator, illustrator slash brand designer. As, as in, he's, she's really, really good in graphic design in, and doing a brand identity. And illustrator slash, sometimes they have two slashes, uh, slash account manager. So um, of course, uh, in terms of salary, I will compensate them accordingly as well. But uh, I would say these are the things that he helps us to think creatively because if we're stuck in illustrating for so long, we will get ad block, you know. So uh, that would be multitasking from uh, what do you think, May? I really like what you said about being like a multidisciplinary the creative, because I agree with you. I'm the same. Uh, but yeah, so from an MNC perspective, so I think securing the jobs, I'm assuming this is a question about interviews, right? So very briefly <laughs> we'll talk about that. I would say your CV, I think Tyler's the perfect person if you want advice on securing jobs. I think he was in the session earlier. He's great on advice. He is also a HR professional. So I would say your CV has to very be very specific if you want to join an MNC. Um, I would say 
the advice is that to tailor your CV to the specific role you want to. Even if you're a graduate, find the relevant keywords and the relevant things to say, you know, in your CV. Then you can secure an interview. Um, processes in MNC are very long. So if you don't hear back, sometimes it's not because you're not talented or you're not relevant. It's just that I get 120 requisitions, you know, applications to my requisitions in a day if I have one open. So, you know, be patient, be persistent, I would say. Sometimes it also helps on LinkedIn if you know the hiring manager, contact them directly. It doesn't hurt. I don't think anyone will be angry at you if you're saying, hey, I'm applying for this role, I'm curious and stuff like that. If you want to connect, so that's number one. Expectations on the job, right? So I think last minute work is an unavoidable thing. Exactly. We like to believe. I know, I'm sure, right? Like We like to believe. I like to believe I'm a super organized person. I will do this and stuff like that. But time just escapes us. And it's not always, I would say, in an MNC, but there are sometimes like time periods where I see in different quarters where we have a higher frequency of work. And whether I like it or not, I have to power through it, right? Timeframes in MNC are quite strict. So I, I mean, the thing is, even though I work in MNC, I'm not just like an in-house designer for one team. I'm in a regional role. I oversee 14 countries. I have stakeholders within Nestle who talk to me and say like, hey, I need this campaign by so-and-so. So sometimes negotiating helps, right? Um, I would say the number one thing is to communicate with your creative leads, communicate with your supervisors, communicate with your senior creatives. It's very important to tell the people who are handling these projects on where you're at and what you can or cannot do. I'm not saying where you're like, I don't want to do this because I'm tired. You're saying, hey, I have these expected deliverables. Concrete evidence and concrete timelines help them understand better and to manage expectations. I'm just saying, Eli's nodding there because he's probably saying the same to his team. Um, tell your boss if you have, if you already have five deliverables on the same time, ask them, hey, what is a bigger priority? Which is a higher level project? You know, I would say that's very important mindset to have, which we don't teach and we don't advise young people. I had to learn this the hard way, right? Only now I know how to navigate. So if my boss throws me 10 projects, I tell her, hey, I can only handle three right now if being realistic, if you want me to keep to the quality. And sometimes you have to ask them, what do you want here? Speed or do you want quality, Right. If it's speed, hey, definitely, this is what you're going to get. You know, be transparent and be communicative. Again, talking to you, your stakeholders is super important. And multitasking, honestly, I would say is a good and a bad. But multidisciplinary, which is what Lai gets into, is very important. Multitasking is not focusing on one thing. Multidisciplinary is having a skill set of a variety of things. I have to agree with him. I know it's very like difficult because you're like, oh, you know, why can't I just specialize in one thing? I was like that. I started out as just an illustrator. I was just like, I want to be an illustrator for the rest of my life. But I actually realized I'm a lot better at, you know, creative thinking, UX and UIs and processes. And I really pushed myself to be uncomfortable because it's important. You have certain skill sets that you can apply, you know, through a multitude of things, which is what Lai is getting at, right? Organization and stuff like that. You can be a creative and you can be organized. You can be a creative and you can be a stakeholder manager. You know, have multi sort of faceted skills it really does help you and what do we enjoy the most right um i would say i'm a people's person even though i'm an introvert i need time to <laughs> shut down later but i love talking to people and i love solving things creatively so when i know i've done things something well and i created a campaign really well and the satisfaction you get from someone saying hey this is exactly what we wanted we took a while to get there to me the end of like thank you for that campaign and seeing the results and seeing the post analytics of everything is very satisfying to me. I am a numbers person. I like data. I'm a nerd in that way. So that's really like great for me. And I said freedom of expression. Sadly, in MNCs, we have brand guidelines. I know designers struggle immensely. My interns in the, in the team, I think he can, he can vouch for that. He struggled immensely with guidelines. It's because I think as designers and also as creatives, rules sometimes can feel really restrictive. But I would say you should take it as a positive. You have to think a little less about how things need to look visually and you can think a little bit more on how to communicate it well, right? You can have your expression outside of yourself. Just because you're doing a task, it doesn't mean you're sacrificing your expression because you can express it in the way that you think, express it in the way that you want to you know, communicate something. So I would say it depends 
ready if you can sacrifice that if you want to join an MNC, especially for freedom of expression. But you can also express yourself in the way that you dress. Look at me. I've got pink hair and I work in a corporate office. I've got tats and I work in a corporate office. People look at me, they're like, you work in a corporate office? And I'm like, yeah, because that's what I express myself with, with my identity, you know? But at the end of the day, I am stood as a person who works in an office. So yeah, you have to make that choice for yourself. Yeah. Hope we answered just, your question. Yes. Like. It, it just seems to me that we, we are the same, you know, <laughs> in M- yeah, NMC or Sarah, we are the same. It's, it's the, <laughs> just the working environment that's different. The, 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 um, the requirements are the same. The um, work, work ethic are the same. But, you know, we are different in terms of working environment. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was very interesting to hear. It, it sounds like there's a lot of similarities between like, you know, a startup and an MMT. Well, at least more than I had expected when I was going into this. Okay, so let's pull up another question from the floor. Um, Marissa Chin asks, why do, why do you think some creatives had to joining a startup or NMC? When you were hiring, were there any questions that kept coming up that they would ask? What do you think, me? Good question. Um, I think from an MNC perspective, people think that you will never be able to do anything and you're just like a lowly person, right? I think that's what a lot of... It's the truth, you know, you're laughing because you know, right? Like when I joined um, an, an MNC, a lot of my friends were like, you're stupid. They're like, that's it. Nothing you're gonna do is gonna add value in any way. And I was just no. like, I get, I guess, yeah. I was I'm on your side here. So it's like, I guess. But I actually really enjoy being in an MNC because, like I said again, right, my value here is that I love solving things creatively. And actually, my friends were quite shocked. They were like, You are really thriving in this environment. I said, Yeah, because to me, it's like what you said, right? It's not about your values is not about you sacrificing anything. It's just an environment and you just need to learn to adapt. So my advice here is like, you know, don't hesitate because what you don't know, you don't know. What you don't try, you'll never know. So be open when you try something. And that's the thing. You can try something and not like it, guys. Genuinely. You don't have to like something if you like, you know, if, you, if you, you're like, Ugh, I, this is gross. Like, it's fine. You can just try it and like, this is not for me. And you can try it and be like, wow, this is really for me. And that's great. Either way, it's a win. You don't try, you, you know, you, you try it, you don't like it. You try it, you find something that you like. But yeah. What Seems do you think? Like like? There's, a, there's a stereotype in MNC mm. and startup. Like if you join MNC, uh, my life will be boring. <laughs> There'll be a lot of rules locking me, you know. But that's not the case because uh, I have a lot of MNC friends who have fun when they have off day. <laughs> they can just take a two weeks off and then don't worry about work. They can do that. Um, and because of the, uh, oh, because of MNC, they have a proper um, career progression plan out. Um, you can, you know, you can jump to this role and then you can jump to that role, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you, you can, you know how your life will progress in an MNC. A lot of people need that, especially creative, um, creative people, people as well. Um, we want the creative, be creative in our work, right? Not our life. We don't want the uncertainty in our life. So MNC definitely can provide us that. Um, when we join the startup, the only thing that they worry, maybe I was thinking, uh, is uh, you cannot grow here. Uh, it's just you will be multitasking and then your boss will be um, taking your advantage <laughs> uh, by doing a lot of things, right? These I've are the heard the opposite, like, people are what? like, you go start up, you can go fast, you know? I'm like, really? Oh. oh. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. See? Really? Interesting. Yeah. There no, we no, go. No. You are talking about the, the grab kind of startup, the, the technology startup, No, you know? my friends were actually saying that, you know, even like small fintech ones that just like started here as well. Yeah. I think you're talking about the well-funded startups. Um, Maybe. But, yeah. My peers are um, bootstrap startups. They are doing great right, way, right, right now. Uh, I mean, when, when, when they first joined them, <laughs> I don't think they would see that as a good company. I see those are the hesitation. It's the kind of parents, it's the kind of uh, hesita- hesitation where parents will say, why, why you continue working on this? It doesn't, doesn't seem to go anywhere, right? But because of that, 
uh, the, a marketing person eventually knows how to open up a few branches of uh, EMAT, uh, convenient mart uh, within three months uh, during the campaign, pandemic period. So that person eventually became my friend as well, uh, start single-handedly, <laughs> rented a place, uh, find suppliers, opening up renovation, blah, 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 everything, EMB. He worked like crazy. Lah. But you know that's the, the achievement. If eventually the bosses fire him or he, he they have something, you know, he can start his own <laughs> convenient bar store right away within months, not like years, you know. So I would say the skill set that you're gonna learn in startup is is crazy and you wouldn't you wouldn't know where it's going it's going to go as long as you if you keep an open heart. For example, um, if you are you have a very strong style, illustration style, and you came to the studio. And I, I will force you to draw other style, right? And if you think that is not my strength and it's, it's very hard, uh, you're killing my, my, my passion, then that is what I mean by close, um, close-minded. Uh, like for example, when we draw stuff, when we paint stuff, uh, we usually paint on a blank canvas on a pen, right? And then 2D like that. But at some point, I said, let's do animation. <laughs> you have to do animation. And animation is about technology, right? You have to know how to set up on After Effects. And it's about numbers. It's surprisingly, it's about numbers because now when I teach the, the young one about animation, I realize, oh, there are a lot of numbers that I'm going to teach. But because it's, I'm used to it already, so I don't mind. But when, when they start get used to new software interface, they just get, you know, uh, panic a little bit. Um, at some point, I also said, I, I can see 3D is a trend because uh, the studio is developing a toy right now. I, I want you guys to, to know how to do 3D. These are the tutorials that I find useful. Um, they also find it really, really hard because 3D is, is very technical and very... Yes. It's, there, there are no creative process in it, to be honest. You cannot do design in 3D software. So that's the time... That, that's what... That's only... It's the only opportunity where you can... The, the boss forces you to learn a new skill. But in MNC, if you're an illustrator, MNC wants you to be a really good illustrator. You, they wouldn't say, can you do this uh, 3D design that you have not, know nothing about? You wouldn't have the chance. So that would be uh, startup. Uh. Interesting. Wow. Actually, I think like depends on which MNC you're with. I think upskilling is actually a, a trend in like how you would, they would actually encourage people to, to start thinking about multiple things. So I would say, Lai, actually, you've got a great MNC mindset. Well done, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be honest, uh, I'm quite surprised that there's a lot of similarities between startups yeah. and MNC. Um, yeah, yeah. And so meaning you guys can join whatever you want. <laughs> we yeah, I mean right. I am actually encouraged. So I'll share with you guys. I start when I started this role, I was like yeah a a mid middleweight designer, and then I've obviously become a lead now. And actually this year I took up UX UI with with nice. another of my interns. Nice. Like yeah, and it was sponsored by the company. Because oh. they saw the value in it. So I would say it, it is. It is like a, a thing that, that happens. Not all MNCs, but I know a lot of it now, they even give you allowances to, to go and learn, like self-learning. It's a big it's thing like a now. rescue, right? Rescue It program. is. It is, absolutely. All right. Nice. All right. Um, let's take another question from the floor. Um, is it true that an MMC is very hier hierarchical because base compared to a startup with the structure and extensive hierarchy in the MNC, wouldn't it result in an employee not being seen, hence lower promotion? I, I don't think so, right? I, th I thought MNC has a lot of system where they, they can judge a person's performance, right? I was going to say the same. Now. I think you, you, you <laughs> tapped into it a little bit about like people in startups and syndrome hats, right? Like yeah. if they're their own companies. Uh, yeah, I think what people really want is an accelerated career opportunity because I think like, you know, money and status is very important. I would say just an advice about maybe this is, this is very much a mentality thing, I think, right? I don't think structure is bad and I don't think hierarchy is bad. It's bad when it is, you know, when people abuse of power, clearly. But these systems, again, I think me and I are in the same thing. Is that systems, these systems are in place because it's help, it's helpful and it creates processes. If you're not being promoted in a certain way, I think this is also a good opportunity to maybe reflect 
number one, whether or not you are even suitable for the role. Because I think not enough people talk about poor job fit, right? You could think that I'm fantastic in this job, but you're not going anywhere. Why? What's the root of it here? Surely it's not just about, you know, somebody not wanting to give you the visibility. Sometimes that could be it. And that would be an opportunity for you to perhaps look at better opportunities, move on, you know, pursue other sort of, you know, creative roles. But I also know that um, not wanting, not being able to be seen is a big thing for this generation, which then interns to me, actually, I want to ask the floor, why is it so important to have visibility? Why do you feel that need to have visibility, right? Why do you not like being the person who is doing the task and doing the task well? Why does visibility equate to success? You're right. But isn't that you how know, the, the yeah. hierarchy judge a person in MNC? I don't think so because you could do a good job and people could still tell you fantastic job, right? But that doesn't mean anything. Like it doesn't mean you're more likely to get a promotion or you're more likely to go on top. Because someone could do a really good job and people don't know and then suddenly they rise to the top still. So that's why my question here, is visibility very important or are we just being, are we just being fed that idea that to be visible hence equates to success? Someone could be visible for the wrong reasons too, lie. But maybe, maybe it's mm. a kind of situation where mm. no one knows we did that and because we, we are not you know, trying to be... Uh, uh, arrogant or something like oh did i do this i do this remember i do this so maybe it's not it's in that situation that person might um, be lack of visibility is that possible that could be possible yeah okay so maybe that would that's the, where the question come in like there's mm. so, so many hierarchy the boss you know taken the, the limelight <laughs> or something Oh, okay. In that sense, meaning that somebody's yeah. taken your your job. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I don't think in all MNCs that's true. I think in bigger uh, businesses but that are like the in-betweens, the Sundrian Bahats, right, which they're not MNCs, but they're not startups as well. You definitely see that. But I think in like big structure businesses, no, not anymore, I would say. I think... I think it's under scrutiny a lot, but this is, again, this is just my personal opinion. I don't think that's the truth, so don't hold, hold me against it. I think, you know, like a lot of companies these days, having that sort of behavior or stealing people's work or taking credit for somebody's work, it's not a good, like, skill or mentality to have. You can be reprimanded and people, when people find out, you can, yeah, your bosses would actually be like, hey, that's not cool. You shouldn't have done that. Actually, I'm quite surprised um, mm. that MNC grows quite uh, open-minded quite quite quickly in because uh, they are they are almost catching up with the US MNC, yeah. already, right? They're open office, a lot of freedoms, flexi work time. <laughs> so I'm I'm quite impressed actually. I thought we will move very slowly, you know, like the government kind of MNC, but no, I think the current MNC is quite uh, up to date in terms of work life balance and benefits as well. The pressure, and, and, right? And if someone taken uh, your the, the the credit of your work, there's I think there's a way where you can blow the whistle or something. That's why. Oh, I'm definitely. Talking. Yeah. Yeah. I think transparency and accountability is a big thing. You know, I think maybe it's a generational shift as well. I think people are sick and tired of that. You know, that what's that really famous advertiser, the one who's always like, you know sticking it to the I forgot there's this guy who's like always taking people's ideas or whatever he's a really fa fairly famous figure I think those are the days that are dead and gone you know in agency perspective where people are throwing work out the window no don't, I don't think that's the mentality here anymore mm, I agree you know, speaking of um, you know taking credit for like ideas uh, we have a question from Elmi Amy, I'm not exactly too sure how to pronounce your name, but I apologize in advance if I pronounce it wrongly. How does it differ from an MMC to startup in terms of sharing opinions and ideas? Is it harder to give opinions and ideas in M an MMC than a startup, or is it the other way around? I think they are almost the same. Uh, in, in startups, you are required to, to give opinions because there are so many, so less people, right? If you all keep quiet, no one will speak. Um, but the, the, the thing about the giving out opinions is also the, the responsibility of the leaders um, of some of my 
the le- leadership role in my company that we have to cultivate an open um, conversation environment where everyone is free to express any stupid ideas, including a bad one, right? Any ideas are ideas. That's the, in my philosophy. La. So we actually spend a lot, of, I actually spend a lot of time because a lot of artists are actually quite introvert uh, and af- afraid of failures in terms of whatever the words that they say. So I have to spend a lot of time to open them up to, to show that I took all of their comments seriously uh, by acknowledging them. So just, just, to, just to hear what they say. Um, how about in, in, in MNC May? I think actually, yeah, we've adapted to that mindset. People are open here to like listening to what you have to say. Sorry, guys, I have a thing in my throat. But yeah, we're very open here. Oh gosh, I think I've been talking for too long. <laughs> <laughs> we're very open here and like open table, everyone can express their opinions. <laughs> and like similar to you, I would listen and I would be like, this is interesting, this is not. <laughs> Let me know like, what do you think? And then I'll like consider what they, you know, <laughs> Give me a sec. Yeah, yeah, I, think I, I think in some cases, sorry. Oh, please, a lie. Go ahead. I think in some cases in NNC, uh, your superior will judge if you are capable. Uh, when uh, sorry, will judge your capability to, uh, based on how well you speak during the meeting. Um, did you voice up? You know, did you just just vo- uh, be blind when people are speaking? So in NNC, I would say uh, they would. <laughs> It, your job requires to speak more. <laughs> it's not right. like you start up. We, we want you Correct. to speak more. We cultivate you to speak more. If anything, here in MNC, we encourage you to, to give your opinion. And I agree with you what you said. No idea, no opinion is a bad opinion. Yep. Right? Because it's a perspective and it's a perspective to consider. And I think it's very important. I think some people, especially creatives, you're right, like, they are like, oh no, I'm saying the wrong thing. Oh no, they don't like what I have to say. Maybe that could be actually, I would say a cultural thing. I noticed that a lot with more Asian-based, like people here, they're very scared to say the wrong thing. They're very scared to rock the boat. When I worked in Europe, your opinions are valued. They want you to speak up. If any, if you don't speak up, they're like, do you not have an opinion? Like none at all, you know? So. Yeah, they're like, are you okay? Like, what? why? Why do you not have an opinion? And I think it's the main thing here, again, I'm going back to mentality, is to not take an offense if somebody disagree with you, right? Because again, just because somebody disagrees with you doesn't mean your idea isn't good. That doesn't mean they have something against you. It's just that maybe it doesn't fit what the, the objective that we want to get to. I think that's very think important to remember. Yeah, go ahead. Another point where Elmi might be asking is, uh, if you are talking about the kind of opinions you want to share with the boss, in startup, of course, you can talk to the boss directly. But in NMC, you can only talk to your superior, but never the, you know, the, the chairman or something. Maybe there's a town hall. Maybe you can ask questions during town hall. But um, in, a, in startup, you should, you should talk to your boss 24-7, midnight or something, you know, when you have questions. So I think uh, in that sense, yeah, you, you, you wouldn't be able to talk to the bosses. The opinion are not shared um, directly to the boss, by the way. In NNC. Perspective, agreed. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, but is it important again, right? Is it? It is. I don't know. Actually, I, it is. Uh, like some of the policies that we have in the studio um, was changed because the, the on-ground person gives feedback right away. But uh, for example, yeah, um, uh, if we are trying to do a workshop, but then the on-ground person said the workshop is really, really hard. But if I am someone who, who doesn't see my stuff, I would say workshop is the next thing. We must do workshop. <laughs> and I will force the illustrator who is not good in teaching stuff to create a bad workshop. And that would be a bad for the company eventually. So I will have to talk to my staff uh, constantly. Then we eventually took the workshop, workshop to other things. So it's a plus as well. We are changing things, uh, evolving. It's not like cancelling. Uh. Like my friend yes. who started the convenience store, right? The, the challenge mm. that they face directly reflect to the bosses. So the boss, which is my friend as well, will know what, what's going on almost every day, you know? Mm. They're not seeing just the direction. 
an NMC, I think the big the big boss will have a direction for the NMC and then just ask the rest of the superior to work on it. So I, I get what you mean now. Yeah. I yeah. think like when, when from that perspective, definitely. I think if you want to make a change or you feel like certain things is, you know, should get better, it is definitely harder in an MNC, right? Because you don't get that that you know opportunity to to go from the top and stuff like that. So yeah, I definitely agree. That could be something that that would be really hard, you know, to 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 like consider when you're joining an MNC. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Speaking of voicing your opinions, uh, Manisha, hmm. she asked, what do you both enjoy in your respective settings in like a startup slash I I enjoy working for myself, I, not for myself, but uh, whatever I'm working on is to build my personal brand or my personal company's brand. Um, so uh, uh, the achievement would be, would be collectively built for my brand. But if I'm working for NMC, whatever I that I've built eventually will go to that MNC. If I change a job, my um, legacy wouldn't be continued. So that's my the, the only thing that motivates me right now, the, the legacy. For me, specific to my role, is the exposure. I'm getting to so many people and so many cultures. That really, for me, has been like the highlight of my career in an MNC, at least. Um, again, because I work in a regional role. And I think that sort of like exposure to all these different cultures and the way people communicate and the way people, you know, consume social media and stuff like that has been incredibly rewarding because I think back to my point, I'm a huge nerd and I love looking at data analytics. So when I'm able to do a campaign and I see that, that's so interesting to see, you know, like what was more interesting for this particular campaign, which comms people responded to its most. And I think knowing that for me as a creative really fuels me to think about, you know, going back again, that mindset I have and how can I apply it to, to, to something that I culturally might not have the full understanding to, but I have a perception of knowing that I can solve a problem you know, and then taking those things and using those opportunities to like learn and, 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 you know, develop myself and think about things. Like, for example, I think there was one thing that we were doing for somewhere in Central West Africa. And we didn't know that a certain color or a certain word meant a different thing in that particular country. So we were reviewing that with one of our stakeholders. She said, hey, I don't know if you guys know, but this word is not a good word. Um, in in like you know Central West I think it was in Ghana and I was just like oh and I think that for me is very rewarding I love learning new things I love being exposed to like different cultures so that's something to consider if you guys want to be in MNC you'll be be able to have the opportunity to like see things cross laterally and vertically as well great and we have uh, a question from May from a well from an anonymous uh, uh, viewer. Are there any creative related positions oh, um, for interns in Nestle and how is the hiring process? If you want to get hired, don't be anonymous, number one. Um, <laughs> I'm not looking for anyone particularly for my team. Um, creative roles are very niche in Nestle, but I do know that if you do want to be more of a comms person, so communications-based person, or you're in a more marketing sort of person, so you're more of a creative director or um, art director sort of person, but you need to have also business mindset. We do have roles like that, and we hire quite, um, I would say quite frequently in our brand teams. So as you know, in Nestle, we have people that work in Milo, people that work in Maggie, we have so many brands. You can even work in... Um, our regionally owned businesses like Nespresso. So if you are wanting to be more like a technologist-based uh, creative specialist, we're also hiring there in internships. So if you want to know, please connect with me. <laughs> you can uh, send me a DM. I'll be happy to connect uh, anyone to, to the right people. And please don't follow the, the, the templates that the teachers give you. They're hiring templates. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm curious, like, what is wrong with the hiring templates that they give to students? It, it doesn't help you standing up. It doesn't help mm. at all. So um, most, of, most of the people are hired, doesn't use a template. They, they speak like they are trying to yeah. speak to me in person, right? So like, 
hi, I've just recently come back from uh, UK and I really like your, your studio's work, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I just detour from art a little bit. And then now I, I wanted to come back and I'm really interested to work in my company. Then I'll be like, oh, this sounds like a person. Then I'll just schedule an interview. But usually what I receive is, uh, hi, I am full name. <laughs> Study at full, the college name. Uh, I would like to apply for an internship at so they'll be high 90 St. Jambo Hut like that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have the human touch. And I, I would say... That is so funny. <laughs> that's correct, right, May? Same thing. I want to tell you a story, Lai. So when I was a student um, here, it's compulsory for you to do your internship, you know, to, to finish your diploma here, right? And at the time before smaller studios were a thing, this is back in like the early 2000s and giving away my age here. <laughs> um, everyone applied to Leo Burnett, uh, Ogilvy, all the big agencies, and they did that. They wrote everything as the teachers told them, attached the right CV. Here comes me, right? Miss Rebellious, real breaker, uh. I'm going to do it my way. All I did was like, hi, my name is May. I'm an illustrator. I want to intern here. This is my portfolio. I got an answer back. Nice. And my <laughs> classmates hated me for it. They were like, why did you get an answer back? All you did was just wrote your name and put this like dingy ass PDF. And I was just <laughs> like, see, then that's your point. I agree with you. I want to see your personality, right? Exactly. I want to see a human at the end of thing. Doing the right thing is sure, you know, it can be beneficial. But if you're connecting with me personally, yeah, say, you know, I love your work. I would love to work with you and stuff like that. So agreed. I think everyone here is a creative person, right? So I have, I used to have a really good intern. It's called Samantha Tan. Um, mm. I think she's working freelance right now. Uh, when, I work, I, when I look at her Instagram, when she applied for the internship, I can see her personality right away. I can see the, the vibe, you know, the, the Zen Z vibe <laughs> um, and, and how, how brave she is and how artistic she can be. And the vibe is on the Instagram already. So I would encourage all of you to look at your Instagram, what's the vibe you're giving. I'm, talk I'm not talking about the artwork vibe. I'm talking about the person vibe. So she okay. has a lot of her live photo, but she will paint on top of the live photo just for fun, just for her own sake, right? So she's a true artist, I would say. So um, the personal thing, can, it should reflect on your Instagram and, and your social media. So it shouldn't be a place for food photos, you know? I agree with you. No, 100%. I'm like that too. If I'm interviewing you, I competencies are competencies. So obviously, we need to look at that, right? But yeah. then I think it's really, I agree with you. It's 100% your vibe and like who you are as a person. So agreed. All right. Um, I, I do see a couple questions in the chat, but unfortunately, we have to wrap up now <laughs> um, and go into the outro. So thank you, May and Lai. That was very insightful. And I loved hearing, you know, from creative leaders and also from you guys, uh, the, the students as like, you know, future creative leaders. Now, uh, don't go just yet. We have some couple goodies for you guys and we'll take a photo at like the end. So please stay till then. Okay, so if you're wondering how do you get access to today's recording um, or basically wondering, you know, uh, about like our other digital.